healthy. <laughs> I've had a really difficult uh, couple of years. I'm just kind of wondering how it's impacted my brain. I right. don't think okay. that I can walk away from all of that trauma and pain unscathed. When I was reading this, was sort of the word that came to my mind was when it rains it really pours. I mean, it just seemed like one tragedy after another, and it's like, when is this going to end? I was in a, a very challenging marriage. Uh, unfortunately, I think that I was living in fight or flight, and I kind of used work to as my escapism. There were days that I would be directing by day and acting at night, so very little sleep. Um, I, I literally was producing, directing, acting, hosting. Mm -hmm. It was just non-stop. I didn't want to stop. I yep. didn't want to deal with what I was dealing with. Okay. And then this last two years, or three years, I guess, uh, with what you, what you had to deal with, what's, what's your mood been like? In 2019, it was um, an unnecessarily chaotic divorce. And um, I can only imagine what that must have done to my nervous system, you know. So 2019, the second half of it, was really trying to get my energy storage back. I was drained, exhausted. And when I finally start getting my energy back, 2020 happens, and the night before we were um, put on quarantine, uh, he took his life. So that was March 12th, um, 2020. And a month later, my dad was diagnosed with leukemia. We're in quarantine, so I can't even be with my dad. And then when I was finally able to be with him, I couldn't hug him or kiss him. And so five and a half months later, you know, we're watching him transition. And if that's not enough, <laughs> two and a half months later, I lose my dog, so. <laughs> so, I mean, lots of lo lots of losses. By nature, I have always tended to be a happy person. Yep. It's just kind of naturally, that was my state of being. Mm -hmm. This, in 2020, I discovered depression. <laughs> like, I really went through depression, insomnia, mm -hmm. lack of motivation. I'm still struggling with that. It's gotten a lot better. It's just kind of been back and forth Boy. where some days I have the energy, yep. other days I just don't have the motivation or the drive. Okay, yep. Very inconsistent. Right. So you kind of go from what, Wonder Woman to? Nothing. Nothing, okay. Yeah. So we gotta figure out how to get you to be Wonder Woman. All the time. All the time. That would be amazing. Okay, I admire your vulnerability Thank and you. your openness. Um, that to me is a sign of courage uh, and strength. That's part of being Wonder Woman, right? So we're gonna take that and look at your pictures and use that as a mechanism to get you to be 90% of the time like Wonder Woman, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go, okay. <laughs> So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the surface of our brain, all right? Okay. Surface of our brain is called the cortex. We mm -hmm. call this the cortical scan. And then we're going to go look below surface, okay? So that's our subcortex. So that's the subcortical scan. Surface, better blood flow. Brain's working pretty good. Decreased blood flow, brain's not working so well. So what we do is look at specific regions to see what that blood flow looks like. When we get a picture of our surface, ideally, this is what we hope to see. This is a typical picture of a female your age. So this picture, we're looking at our brain from the bottom up. Okay. Top down. That's the left side of our brain. And here's the right side of our brain. 
The colors on here mean absolutely nothing. We purposely put colors on here to make them look pretty. Okay. Okay? We're mainly looking at texture. The okay. smoother the surface, the better the blood flow. The more bumps we see or black spots, there's less blood flow to those areas. So I don't want to see more bumps than this. Okay? okay. All right, we're going to look in regions. For example, here, this is our lower frontal cortex. It's one area responsible for helping us focus. This also helps just with making decisions. All right, so we'll take a look there. These are our uh, frontal lobe, so that's a frontal lobe. A frontal lobe helps with something called executive functioning. Big fancy word for basically coming up with an idea, following through until it's done. So big chunk of um. cognitive change. These two bumps, these are our temporal lobes. Our temporal lobes help with mood control. People with um, bumps here can start having really bad issues with anger. They'll lose their temper. We'll see lower grade anger like irritability, frustration. We can also see a lot of anxiety and nervousness as well. This raised area, this is our cerebellum. Our cerebellum helps with the motor coordination. In addition to motor coordination, this also helps with thought coordination. We used to think, ah, this is just accessory brain. More and more, this is looking like the central processing unit of our brain. So, you ready to see your pictures? Yes. Dim the lights, here we go. Okay, so that's your resting scan. I'm gonna put that in that side for you. That's my resting. That's your resting scan. Okay. All right, there's your active scan. All right, so our lower frontal cortex. Okay, focus, paying attention, making good decisions. This is our right lower frontal lobe. This is our left lower frontal lobe. So your right lower frontal cortex is pretty good, okay? Your left lower frontal lobe, all right, you see this little dark spot here? Yeah. Got a little decreased blood flow here. We rank these one to four. One's pretty mild, four's really severe. Okay, these are like little ones. So it's not huge, all right? When I go from your resting to your active, Right side looks great. Left side maybe a little more dark here, but again, it's like a little one. Your frontal lobes here look pretty dang good. Look at how smooth that is, mm -hmm. okay? Now, that said, on your active scan, see these bumps? You got two little bumps on your dorsal lateral left prefrontal cortex and one on your right side. And they're not there. Yeah, so when I, you know, when I see this, when you get active, your brain actually gets less blood flow to these areas. Okay, okay. now the big, when I, when I saw this, I go, what, what's going on here? Could be toxins, okay? Wouldn't be our typical way, but it could be toxins we'd see. Can you see that spot there? Yeah. Yeah, you got a little spot there where there's some decreased blood flow as well. Okay, so I don't, I mean, it's not huge, but you know, they're, they're there. Your temporal lobes, right temporal lobe, left temporal lobe, like to see two fluffy cotton balls. Pretty good. Yeah. But then look here. All right, here's your left temporal lobe. That right temporal lobe. Can you see those bumps here? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's only on one side. All right. When I see one side, not both. I think more usually hits to the head. Really? Okay. Yeah. But when we see this, okay. So what happens? People get more frustrated. They get more angry, more irritable. So you have something hard to do. We have this, and we get frustrated. What do we do? I need to take a break. Mm. Okay, yeah, so this might be playing in a sum where the, your, your, your mood looked like you've done some work, and I saw this, I'm yeah. like, so we might want to help here get smoother. We're going to talk about a few things. We got to get this whole surface, though, smoother. <laughs> this is a typical picture of a female brain. Just to orientate first, here we're looking at a brain from the bottom up, top down, left side, and the, this is the right side in terms of orientation, but we're looking on the inside. We're gonna mainly look at this picture, the one from the bottom up. Mm. Wherever you see blue, our blood flow is at about the 50th percentile. Red, blood flow is faster, it's at the 85th percentile. And then finally white, our blood flow is really moving fast, it's at the 92nd percentile. Ideally, I want your colors to match up the same. That's what's normal, okay? All right, so should we take a look? Yeah. There's one, there's your resting. Oh, yikes. All right, there's your second. There's your active scan. Resting scan, active scan. We're gonna mainly look at this picture here. 
in this picture here. All right, so our cerebellum, our motor and thought coordinator. I like to see a lot of red and white here. Okay, it looks like we got a lot of red and white in the middle, right? Yeah. Okay, not so much on the side. Now I'm gonna show you something. Here's your cerebellum looking from the bottom up. Here's your cerebellum on the side. This should be all red and white. So where's all the white? This is called your posterior cingulate. Like to see a little bit more blood flow, kind of in both of them, okay? Yeah. So it's kind of quiet down here. Thalamus should have a little red spot when we get white. Okay, yeah, we might get a little bit more apathetic. Who cares here? Our basal ganglia should have two little red spots. If we got bigger red or white, what you do right here, more anxiety, nervousness, worry, okay? Tension, we might have problems with sleep. Who has problems two nights a week with sleep? Yeah, who, who, who bites down? Yeah, okay, we, we see a lot here. Who procrastinates? Yeah, okay, so <laughs> this is where we're gonna do some more work to try to help out. All right, now, since you brought it up earlier, tr yes, about trauma. Yes. Okay, you've got what I call kind of a mild diamond pattern here. Okay, whenever we see our thalamus, basal ganglia, anterior cingulate, basal ganglia, if they all light up, I draw a line between them, creates a diamond. We call that the diamond pattern. We see a higher association with past trauma with that. <laughs>